Hey, what's up, Candy Ken? What's up, Baby J? How's it going? Not today. With Candy Ken and Baby J. It's Candy Ken. Candy Ken! Candy Ken! Welcome to the Candy Ken Show. All right, everyone. We are back on the Candy Ken Show, and we have the first doctors in the building. I am so excited to announce Encino Dental Smile. How's it going? Woo! We're in the house, <laughs> man. We're in the shiny, bright house. This is so funny, man, because um, these two guys really changed our life. Me and Baby J, we we're so happy. We were really, I know dentist is like a crazy topic because as a kid, it was like a whole thing. We don't, we didn't have TVs in Austria like to like make this like all comfortable and fun. And you guys, like you don't, it's not this like doctor, patient. It's more like a friend Absolutely. relationship and like you guys are cool and uh it was just the, one of the best experiences i had um with like the whole doctor thing and this is so cool i'm so excited to have you guys on well that's the thing a lot of people don't go to the dentist because it's like white coat syndrome you know you get scared seeing the doctor going in so we want to create that kind of environment where you're coming to see your friend you know, just as you guys with any patient that comes in. So it's a more comfortable setting, less anxiety. Is that why we don't wear white coats anymore? <laughs> we don't want to scare the old school way of like, you remember every, anything that hurt, you're going to go see this guy wearing that white coat. And immediately you would think like, oh, like I'm going to be in a little bit, of, little bit of pain or something like that. So we ditch the white coat. We wear like cool, fun things. And I'm so happy that you feel that way because... If Baham agrees with me, that's the vision that we have for our dental office. We want to be able to do dental work to its best potential without making our patients feel like you're in a dental office. It's new version and out with the old, in with the new. Man, and and Sino Dental, they have uh, a crazy, crazy celebrities going there. You guys, even that wall that you use is is like famous on IG, I feel like, yeah. where, where it says your logo. And how you guys always, I mean, it's crazy. It's so different than like any other dental office I've ever been to. It's like an experience. You're very precise on the cleanings. There's n no pain really. And uh, yeah, it really changed uh, everything for me. And also, it's just so impressive to see the clientele you guys got going on. Um, man, so yeah, maybe you can tell me, like, of course, you got Candy Ken and Baby J. Yes, we who, do. Who else do you have? We have, we're honestly, we've been blessed with a variety of different fields from athletes, influencers, from multiple different platforms. We have obviously a big presence in people with music um, and speakers, um, producers, models. literally, yeah, mo <clears throat> a lot of models, international models, um, and one of our favorite is when we see people that are in the cosmetic field, but in different departments, like makeup artists, yes. which um, is so, you would think like working on celebrities would be hard for us or intimidating, but really working on people that are like makeup artists, artists at heart. And they do these, cr even like nails, people that do nails, they're so, so artistic. And uh, you'd be surprised because once we make them happy, we're like, wow, like, you know, we are definitely doing it to that extent that these artists are happy and it helps us grow. And Paham could really like go through the people that we've seen and and he, he brings up those, those type of people for a few reasons. They're very specific. Mm -hmm. You know, they have an eye. So to satisfy those type of people <laughs> requires a certain type of person to do so. Yeah. So, and you guys do it all from uh, from uh, the Invisalign that Baby J is doing to veneers. I mean, you do like the whole uh, makeover and uh, you can do it all. Everything. We start from anything from teeth whitening to cleanings, Invisalign, limited ortho, uh, cosmetic dentistry, um, general dentistry, implant dentistry, oral surgery. We have the whole shebang. Yeah. And that's a little bit of a misconception about our office. We get calls and DMs all the time. Hey, do you guys do this type of dentistry? And we always say yes, because we want to be a well-rounded office. Yes, we focus mainly in cosmetic Yes, we're really known for the, you know, high quality porcelain veneers, but 
as you guys have seen, we do big smile makeovers, like really dramatic uh, full mouth reconstructions. And it's impossible to do those cases if we're going to just limit ourselves uh, with just porcelain veneers. Um, you know, we, Parham and I both really are big in taking the required steps. So we have to have all these fields available so patients can come in and we give them exactly what they want with options. You know, like baby J, she said, um, you know, I have some minor things I want to fix and want to, I like my smile. So we introduced Invisalign. So Invisalign is cosmetic, but at the same time, is a different aspect of dentistry is technically orthodontic teeth movement. And we offer that. We're exceptionally good at it. We are a big provider of clear braces or Invisalign, and we've been extremely successful. We take a lot of time on every case. Yeah, and you do like a 3D. Yeah, I love yes. the 3D. They they do the whole 3D thing where you can like see already what it's going to come out as, Yes, which is really impressive and really cool. And uh, and it goes quick. Like she has like different the the different things you put up, and then it moves in the perfect position. Before you know it, you have the the smile that you want. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, Invisalign is great. We're both Invisalign patients, actually. Okay. Yeah. Um. For a long time, uh, I did Invisalign myself at least um about fifteen years ago, which was. Invisalign has been around for a long time, mm. um, and they are extremely successful. They are probably one of the fastest growing and best dental product that's came on the market. Um, but yeah, uh, we love Invisalign. We truly we love Invisalign. People that come in and they say, I want smile makeovers, but I like my teeth. Uh, we're always open to like repositioning them and getting them going in a correct way. And also Invisalign helps us to kind of take a more conservative approach with cosmetic dentistry. Yeah. You know, um, it, it, once you get a nice alignment on the teeth and the teeth are nice and, you know, straight, sitting down properly, they're biting down properly, it becomes a more conservative treatment. So that's another very big benefit. People don't really uh, consider while they're thinking of. And a lot of times we've had patients come in and they say veneers, you know, and we're more conservative and we kind of talk them them, out of Yeah, it. talk them out yeah. of them. And that doesn't happen that often. And we should talk about conservative dentistry because that's a big, big, big topic that yeah. jumps around to what you guys do in social media, in YouTube, and all those different platforms. There's a huge, huge misconception about how aggressive uh, dentistry is. So uh, we'll get to the topic of, you know, doing dentistry overseas and, and other places where the standard of dentistry is truly different. And, um, but here in the US, we have a very specific standard for dentistry. So we have to be conservative. So you've seen like um, millions and mil hundreds of millions of views on people that done their teeth somewhere mm -hmm. out, you know, overseas. And then they've been scored with the results or whatever the case might be. So they, immediately feel like that's the standard everywhere. But that's not true. We want to put that out there for all dentists um, that for most part, American dentistry is more conservative overall. And what you see basically on few cases online, and you know, it's not really what the standard is. You know, if it's really hard to like kind of pinpoint and say every case is going to be the same. Like if me, you, and Parham did our teeth all at the same time. We'll all have different looking teeth, yeah. however it's designed and stuff like that. So your case is not his case. His case is not my case. Every case is unique. And we have to definitely understand that and kick that misconception out of the talks. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, I don't know if... Uh with uh, beauty things, if you really want even like the cheap option when it comes to your face, which like you or you mentioned before the podcast is like, there's like a lot of things you can flex with, like your house, your car, uh, your your diamonds. But then when it comes to your smile, it's very present. Right. And if yeah. I have to redo it, or if I'm not completely satisfied with the product, or I go cheap on it, I always yeah. say like, it's like almost like cheap meat. Like you don't want to buy cheap meat. Yep. <laughs> you know, it's not worth it. Um, and so is veneers or, or dental things. So 
I would never really consider going overseas and getting it fixed up. Yep. Like that, but like, so you're saying that like sometimes, let's say I do that, that like you have patients come from overseas, not being happy with the results and then coming to you guys and being like, yo, can you fix this? I'm not happy. And then you have to redo veneers. Yes. Yeah. A lot of redo cases. A lot of redo cases. Yeah. We got, like, we grew on redo cases. We've had patients um, come straight from the airport. Yeah. They were wherever they were. You know, there's multiple places, but uh, we've had a patient come straight, had done their teeth somewhere else, knew something was wrong, did not like the experience at all. Okay, can you get to go in detail? Um, without yeah. Without mentioning the name, like, um, like what but, happened with the veneers? Like, so we've had some of the craziest, and Paham, it's has way better memory than I do on these <laughs> cases because we see a lot. Uh -huh. So there's not a single week that we don't see something. And it just blows our mind. Like even it was yesterday, I had a patient that came in and he was not happy with his smile. And, and I knew, I'm like, I even told the patient, I'm like, I'm sure you're going to shock me. So tell me what happened. So he said that basically he's got his veneers from a doctor who doesn't have an office. He doesn't have a license in the US. Yes. And he, I feel like he did his teeth in his backyard situation because in his he, garage. Right? Garage. Yeah. Wow. This is happening in LA and it's happening in US. People are doing their teeth in like a garage setting. And he was telling me how the person didn't even have an x ray machine to take x rays. So it just blows my mind. But that's one of the craziest, like most recent. This is like yesterday that I heard someone did it in a garage. We've had patients that. And then like the the it wasn't like the right color or the right cement or he was just having pain. He just pain. Uh -huh. Yeah, just pain. His bite was off. Yeah, uh, it just doesn't fit in his mouth. You know, you know when you look at a look at a person and their teeth are kind of like spitting at you. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're like, hold on, what's going on with your teeth? It's kind of that situation. Um, so that's the thing. Like Dr. Frenick was saying, we literally sit there tooth by tooth and measure out what is gonna fit into this patient's face. Yeah. We don't look at your mouth. We look at the whole facial aesthetic. And that's what's kind of unique about when you go to a you know, professional cosmetic dental office. They or we want to put this in the right way. Yeah. So let's let's and juice it up. He, he, <laughs> he, he wanted a good price or why did he do that? I honestly like what I, makes I, you I, go I, to a garage. <laughs> but you see when you've done something I don't want to say wrong or mistake mm -hmm. Like we've, we don't want to like piggyback on it because they've already took that step yeah, to yeah, like already, fix it. Yeah. So I'm not going to go back and be like, hey, like, <laughs> what were you thinking? <laughs> like, it doesn't help the situation. We're there to change the experience. Just like you guys had a good experience. There's a reason they came to us. Um, you know, we've, we're proud to say we've grown in a situation that we've been recognized in the industry for people that care. And that's the most rewarding thing Absolutely. that we've got, you know, because uh, one thing that co people come to us to say that we love your veneers, yes. But at the same time, they say, we know you guys are going to care. We know that you guys are going to give me the quality that I didn't get. Yeah. So going back on that patient, we're not going to like really make him feel bad um, because there's no point, you know, he, he's, I'm sure he's already down financially and emotionally and physically. So uh, we start immediately talking about how can we fix this? Let's bring your smile and confidence and comfort back. He was in a lot of pain. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, he was there with his uh, significant other and she was just stressed out. She was, you know, same with him. They were both stressed out and extends, you know, that's another thing. Like it really truly extends to your family sometimes. So there's a lot of times that we see like, uh, you know, husbands and wives come in and like, you know, the guy's been so uncomfortable. So he's been uncomfortable at home. So it hasn't been a good situation at home. So it's really, really, again, based on what you said, it's very important. It's not about cheaping out. That's one of the things. It's just like making the right decision, doing some research and stuff like that. But I want to like, I'll, I'll juice it up for the podcast. Um, <laughs> talk about some of the crazy things we've seen. Yeah, but I like what you said because I used to not even smile because as a teenager, so I, I didn't have enough space on the top and on the bottom. So the top, they did four screws and they slowly made me like click 
in pain every night. I had to like click this thing and it would yeah. like widen it. Expand it. Expand yeah. it. Yep. And I would just suffer and suffer. And at the end of the day, after like, I don't know, five, six years of dental work, of braces, I still had yellow teeth and I still had to get veneers. So it was crazy. Like, I don't know if we could have just like skipped that and like went straight to the veneers, right? Mm. But then my parents didn't have the money and it, it was, it's like a different, they tried to like do as much as they can. Right. And then on the bottom, they, they widened it and then did an ultrasound cut and then let it grow back together. Wow. So that's, they, they got more space in the bottom because both was just not enough space for my teeth. And so for me, I suffered my whole youth and I always just didn't smile because I was just so uncomfortable. And that changes your whole personality because suddenly you're not confident. Yeah. You don't want to talk to girls. Yep. And that can like, even like when I changed it, it's not like everybody's like, oh my God, your teeth. It's like you realize that mostly yourself cared the most about it's your within. teeth. It's your insecurities and nobody really cares. And you could have just like rocked those yellow teeth and be <laughs> confident. But at mm -hmm. the end of the day, if you're if you if that's the only thing you think about, that is what you're gonna give up to other people, and that's gonna be unattractive if you're so in your head about your teeth. So once I changed my smile, uh, I just felt so good about doing social media, being close up on camera, being yep. on camera at yep. all. I used to study photography and be always behind because mm -hmm. I didn't want to be in front of the camera, and my accent was crazy, Austrian <laughs> accent. And there's all these insecurities that you right. have, right. and I think. A smile is a major step to confidence. And you can really change, you guys change people's life for real, even if it's only for themselves. But once they have that, they, the, the confidence, their whole life and personality is going to like flower. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And that's a, a, not only in so many different aspects, like even the more you smile, the happier you'll start looking. You know what I mean? Not just from your smile. You know what I mean? Just face, like your facial ex expressions will change. Men uh, mentally, you become a more positive person and you draw more people towards you. So many people have came back saying, uh, this is the best investment. Yep. All I, the time. My sales have gone up. Oh, yeah. I get more clients. People look at me better. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's, uh, and this isn't just from us. This is actually, this is an actual study. Your yeah. smile really puts a, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Even if you're not a model, still you, you put the positivity out yep. and, and your people want to be around you. People want to be around people that smile. Yeah. It opens doors. Yeah. Yeah. It's it really, an investment. It's, again, this is the one thing we hear constantly mm -hmm. because obviously it is an investment. Like, on veneers, you got to really be able to put that investment into yourself. And yeah. you know, as a person that's always in shape, always in those cold baths to <laughs> make yourself mentally and physically better, you know better than anybody investing in yourself is the best thing you could do. So um, a lot of our patients don't realize that initially they come in thinking that, you know, they're investing in their career. But then they realize they really truly invest in themselves because besides um, the cosmetic and the look part of veneers that we do, if you guys take a closer look and Parham and I put in a lot of focus, like all our social media content, they have multiple views, you know, and that's something that's unique about us. Like a lot of other, you know, offices, they might just put one smiling pictures and, you know, that's standard. But we want to be outside of the standard. We are retracting. We're showing the gums. We are showing what was the cavities. We're showing the missing teeth. We're showing everything. So we want you to understand that we are handling everything A to Z. And besides cosmetic, what's making you feel good, and I know you're really big in the you know, diet and food and your body and digestion and all of that, it's really important that your mouth, you have to understand that your mouth is the biggest opening in your whole body. This is like your cave. This is your entryway. Yeah. Besides any other hole, this is your biggest hole that enters your hole inside. Everything that goes inside your body mainly goes through your mouth. And once we fix it cosmetically, we're also enhancing it functionally. So, you know, an average person is supposed to, I believe, don't quote me on this, chew about 30 to 32 times per before they swallow. And if you count, next time I challenge you, okay. next time before you eat something, just count how many times mm -hmm. you chew before you're ready to swallow. It's maybe like eight to 10 times. You're like, oh, like I'm ready. Like what 30 times? Yeah. But when the function is there, you really get that good 
crunch in your food, you really break it down. So you start seeing better metabolism. So we've had people that have done Invisalign, they've had done cosmetic dentistry that enhance their function. So they're eating better, chewing better, their digestive system is doing better. Losing weight. Losing weight. So it's so much, we say this all the time, it's so much more than cosmetic. And we focus in that. We're not just here to make you pretty. We're here to give you long-term results. We're here to make you functionally as best as possible. So yeah, it's that's the whole picture. And when he says cosmetic, he's not talking about just veneers. He's talking about like Invisalign cleaning, just overall getting you up to that hundred percent oral health. Yep, absolutely. And you guys, do you guys still take new patients? Yeah, yeah, we take we'll, we'll take new patients. We actually do well because uh, we we finish our cases pretty like our patients love to come back mm-hmm. like they are happy like p- patients tell us they miss us all the time they come and say oh i hate the dentist and in our head we're me and Paham are nodding <laughs> like all right you you know you're going to do well with us you know we've never worried and since they come back and they finish their treatment we don't have that much like people that just linger on. Mm-hmm. So we are always accepting new patients. We don't want to be the type of office that we closed off. We we'll accept everybody. We will do the best we can to help everybody because that's the main focus. And most of our patients, we don't really, we don't do advertising. Our patients are on all on referral. Yeah. Friends and family are referral from one person to another. Well, you guys do a great job with the celebrities, yeah. which is like the best way of advertisement. Yeah. Because I think that's how I even saw you guys is like you popped up and I've seen like Lelipons and like, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, so many of, of the people that I follow on social media. Yeah. Uh, and they all come to your office. Yep. And they become our friends. Exactly. Yeah. You know, just like the patients, they become just like, just you, like guys. you guys. Yeah. Just like you guys. Like we consider you guys as friends and... You know, because that, again, changes the vibe of the office. You're just not a patient to us. We care more for that. We'll care to, like, you know, show up to your podcast and show up to whatever you guys are doing and support. And if you guys notice, like, our social media team really focuses on really getting back to our patients. So we'll, we'll, we'll support with, like, being part of your social media, liking, commenting, and honestly, Big shout out to all of our celebrity patients. They show us consistently so much love. They invite us out to so many things. Um, You know, whether we we went to multiple concerts. Really blessed, honestly. Yeah, very blessed. And and we we ask for nothing. Like, you know, usually it's all love. It's just solely them having a good experience. And they go out and they talk about it. And that's been our, you know advertisement yeah. what we call yeah. it it's just been so effortless so we're really really blessed and thank you and thanks to all of our celebrity patients um big of and small of course of course because i used to go to this dentist and they would always shoot me up with antibiotics because you have to take very good care of your veneers once you have them which i also wasn't really aware of that like it does it's not as easy cleaned as normal teeth and you do need to take a good care of them because there yeah. is a of course, they for everybody that doesn't know veneers, there's like so you you keep your real teeth. They get like sometimes a little bit um, turned down, but normally they keep it as as good as possible. Yeah. And then they cement a porcelain teeth on top of it. So I still have my my real teeth in the on the back of my mouth, and then on the front you see all porcelain. Yes. And depending on how big your smile is, the more you go back. Exactly. And then I do have my genetically yellow teeth in the back. <laughs> it's crazy when I look at them. And then um, I used to go to the dentist and they would always give me antibiotic in, in the gums until you came around and you did a very different approach of the whole thing. And you really, you you told me, yo, like use the water pick. Uh, you got a floss. Uh, all the little things that really at the end of the day made my gums healthy made me not be in pain, no bleeding when I use the floss. And at the end of the day, uh, my veneers just feel better and, and are great now. Um, Your gums look great. Yeah, yeah look- the gums are just much better. And also, I did not get the veneers from you guys. And the person who did it, there was just not much as much communication as I wish there would have been. Okay. And that's where you guys really shine is like there's so much communication. There's so much back and forth until you really 
get to to the product or to the look that you want to achieve because uh, I really wanted that Hollywood smile and people just instantly noticing and being like, yo, your teeth are crazy, <laughs> like some Gucci main shit. Yeah. And, and the doctor was more like, I'm going to do um, what I think is best for you and you'll thank me in 20 years. But then also he has no idea who I am. And he didn't like look into his person in my personality or, or my appearance and what I do online. So it's more like he would probably appreciate it for himself. Right. And then it's, it's funny because I was like, why don't you have veneers? <laughs> right. And uh, it's uh, because I feel like if you're a doctor yourself, uh, you know how to take care of your teeth. Right. So veneers, sometimes I just had yellow teeth, but I took good care of them. And like sometimes there's just no other way than to do veneers. Right. Um, right. But sometimes, of course, if you have your real teeth and they're like beautiful, there's no need for it. Yeah. So uh, that's why I understand that not every doctor, because I was like, yo, why don't you everybody get veneers, right? Because <laughs> yeah. they're so perfect. Even yeah. if you drink coffee, yeah. nothing stains. I would drink coffee, my teeth would be yellow, like yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah. And then we can't shoot and I need like a coffee to shoot TikToks and we would <laughs> drink coffee and Baby J would be like, oh my God, your teeth are so yeah. so colored from that. Yeah. So I do love my veneers. I just like, we talked about this. Sometimes they have a little of a yellow bleed mm -hmm. from the back teeth, mm -hmm. which are naturally yellow. Yep. And uh, yeah, sometimes I just don't like that. And also sometimes I would want them to be a little bit annoyingly white. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we get that all the time. Um, it, what we say when, we do, when we're doing design and... Parham is amazing at this. Mm -hmm. He's amazing at reading the room, reading the patient, mm -hmm. you know, and really understanding that, you know, we constantly have to remind ourselves, these veneers are not for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? My job is to give you what you want without you going too much out of line. So a lot of times the patients come in, they're like, Doc, I trust you. And we hear this all the time. Doc, I trust you. Do whatever design you want. And we don't do that because we want to hear you. You know what I mean? We want to see you. So we're not going to jump into your veneer design the first appointment. Like we want to see, I'll, I'll see what you're wearing. I'll see what you're doing. Like, you know what I mean? So we'll design it to your character. And um, that's a big, big part of the room because I might like something. I might like black. You like pink. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to force you to come wear black because that's not you. So, um, yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's that's. that's and you can make important. them nice and small too, right? Because yeah. a lot of veneer problems is the size, I would say, because of they go on top of your real teeth. So there's a little bit of, uh, uh, they, well, I guess if you don't put the time in, you just make them a little bit bigger and put that on top. But then I saw Conor McGregor's teeth. Oh. And they're, <laughs> they're, they're so beautiful. So tiny. Yeah. They're they're not like uh, the like horse teeth, you know? They're yep. like fucking tiny. Yeah. And beautiful. Like yeah. almost like his, this, the normal size, just white as hell. Yep. This is white as hell. This is really well. That's the look he likes. Yeah. He said he 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 looked at his bank account and he had to uh the, his teeth had to match his bank account. <laughs> what, what he always, always says that. He goes, I always now you say that. Yeah. I say I don't I don't necessarily say bank account. Uh, because we have some like really, 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 I mean, very successful patients and um, they come in and I'm like, after we've done everything, like, you know, they come in with, you know, the watches and the flags and all of that like stuff. Like some, some Dubai chics, like you <laughs> yeah. said, like they, they book out the whole yeah, loft. We, yeah, yeah they're just, uh, we've had some crazy things happen mm -hmm. in the office as far as people that come in. I mean, a lot of the times, like people think that the people that we see and we post are the only people we see, but there's so many people that we can't even post. Yeah. You know, we're signing NDAs. We have to shut down the office. We actually had to shut down the building one time and, you know, bring people in, like people come in, like the security team has to check out the entire office, go room yeah. to room, make sure there's nobody in the rooms. There's nobody allowed in the office. There's so much that goes beyond what we show that we cannot show because we want to respect the patient's, you know, privacy. But, you know, going back to all of that, we've, it's, it's just, it's just been really, really, really cool to see like who wants to be out there, who doesn't. And, you know, the colors and the designs and the jewelry that the you know the diamonds and the gold 
So it's, what do you normally say? So you don't say bank oh, account. You yeah, say yeah, yeah, that's what I was getting. To. <laughs> I say now your teeth match your lifestyle. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You said it in a TV That's show. That's his too. favorite yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, because it really does. It brings mm -hmm. that picture together. And that's what we were talking about before. Like, people love to flex. You know, it's it, it, even if you're not really showing off, it's just even if it's for you saying, you know, expressing your passion, if you're into cars or if you're into clothes or you just want to, you know, make yourself feel good. Like, I, we were talking about this. How many people have seen your car? Not that many people. How many people see your house, big or small? Not that many people. How many people understand what kind of clothes you wear? Do they look down at your shoes? Do they understand jewelry and stuff like that? They don't see those things often. Your jewelry might be, your watch might be under your uh, shirt. Your necklace might be tucked in. Your house might be in a different country. But everybody sees your smile. Everybody sees your smile. So, um, you know, I, it, a lot of, and this is something I've heard from our patients. And one of our patients is like, you know, with all the crazy things happening in LA and stuff like that, someone's like, you know what my teeth are my biggest flex? Because nobody could take them from me. Because <laughs> <laughs> right now everyone's like, oh, I'm not going to wear this. And it's just weird, you know, dangerous, yeah. this and that. He's like, yeah, but my teeth, no one's taking that from me. And everyone knows that, you know, having good teeth is a sign of, you know, not even success, just about, it shows that you care about yourself. It's like, me, if you see somebody that like is fit, like you, does that mean that you're just because you're fit, you're super wealthy? Not necessarily, but it means that you put time into yourself and that's wealth also. Exactly. Yeah. That's Discipline, honestly wealth. Yeah. Health. Yep. Hygiene. Hygiene. Exactly. Yeah. Like, uh, tells a lot about a person. The, yep. the body, but also the teeth, for exactly. sure. Exactly. Yeah. So you can tell right away, like, what's going on. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And it's, and, and, uh, I get to one thing that I have, like, I told him before, I have a, like, little surprise, oh, something yeah. we have in common. And, uh, We've been blessed to have so many traveling patients. And that's another thing a lot of people don't know about us and think it's crazy. I even sometimes think it's crazy. But we have traveling patients almost from every single state in the United States, yeah. which is crazy. We're so honored that, you know, sometimes people drive in L.A. You're like, oh, I had to drive an hour to come see you. But, in, you know, but we have patients that take three flights and are happy to come see us. They bring their family. I have a patient that comes from an island that she has to take two to three flights just to get off. The, she gets off the island. She has to have a stop. And then from that stop, she another has stop. to get to our office to get to, a, you know, another stop to get to our office. She started coming out. I'm like, you're crazy doing all of this. She's like, no, I'm not crazy. She ended up bringing her daughter too. So now they both travel. And uh, going back to that, we, you're uh, also from Vienna. If Austria. I, uh -huh. Austria. Yeah. So I used to live in Austria. Oh. So which is such a small world. And for how um, long? I was there for about a year uh -huh. and I actually went to school there when I was much younger. Oh. So when I saw your recent post about some of the, like you were saying that, um, you know, I was just in the streets and doing my thing and people thought I was crazy. I recognized those streets. Oh. So, you know, we're talking about traveling and our patients and all of that. I mean, we've yet to have anybody from Vienna. No, I don't think so. No, we, we've had multiple people from outside of the U.S., mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people from London and U.K. overall. Uh, Dubai. Dubai. Uh, we've had sh uh, Qatar, a sheikh from Qatar, yeah. um, and cool stuff like that. But one thing we do share that I used to live in Vienna, great, great place to visit. People don't know it's like a hidden gem. Really? A hidden gem. And beautiful to experience all four seasons. Mm -hmm. Lots of like um, museums and just beautiful architectures. And there's like a burnt church, right? Mm -hmm. Which is insane. It looks like a poster. It looks like it's not even real, but it's this big church that was burnt. But they restored it and it's functional. Very historical. Very historical. And these like beautiful palaces and stuff like that. So 
Shout out to the people Man, from shout Austria. Shout out to Austria. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. And so you went to school, like dentist school there? No, or? no. This is when I was super, super young. So when I'm, I'm, we're both initially Persian. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we, we moved to America. You had a transitional period in a different yeah. country. So that happened to be the place that we've transitioned into before coming to America. And I went back and I visited, actually. I went back for Whoa. like a... You know, what you guys would call holiday vacation for us for like a week to just bring back all those memories of my childhood, spending time in there. And yeah, so I said that was like a little memo that I wanted nice. to pick up, which is really, really cool. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love Austria. There's a lot of good things. And of course, there's not much going on. And I had to get out of there to follow my dream. But it's a special, magical Alps. And it's a special place. When did you sure. come from Austria? I like seven years ago. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, I've been in LA since seven years. And then before that, I lived two years in Berlin where I studied photography. And before that, I lived like 20 years in Austria. Oh, nice. Wow. Even wow. though it's not in Vienna, it's all the way to the west, almost Switzerland. So there's a lake gotcha. and there's a little town called Bregenz. Mm -hmm. And Germany and Switzerland also is on that lake. And so you have all the three countries in one place, kind oh, of. Wow, yeah. how cool is that? Very cool. Wow, yeah. that's, that's really amazing. Man, yeah. so when did you guys decide to be, like, dentist is my passion? Or, like, what led you to, or what do you want to... Honestly, yeah. I, I, I've always been into, like, health and science. I think I... I it started off with, while I was in college, I you know, I just went into... Uh, I I... I uh, did like an elective in a dental um, dental office at school, and I'm like, man, this is pretty, you know, interesting. I'm pretty good hands on. So um, one thing from and all, three of my roommates were all two of my roommates were in dentistry. So um, it kind of drew me towards that, and the more I got involved in it, and I was like, I kind of like this, you know. So it was interesting, and it's challenging. Yeah. I like challenge. Yeah. yeah, and it's always crooked. <laughs> yeah man when i think about ai taking over and robots and shit dentist will be i mean we're far from robots taking over yeah i feel uh, we feel man. pretty safe yeah it's very it's, safe it's artistic uh -huh. it's really truly artistic and he's being super chill about saying he's good with his hand he's oh he's the best he's I probably know. if you've been touched yeah. by parham you <laughs> remember for a long time yeah. he he is exceptionally <laughs> good exceptionally, exceptionally precise precise like his hand-eye coordination is like supreme i always i always said i probably even said it to you he is really, really good hands on. Uh, that's you. and plus a lot of other things. Yeah. Um, it was actually, if you don't mind me sharing, it was his birthday actually no yesterday. Way. Oh my God. Yeah. So yeah. late happy birthday. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Your cancer? Cancer. Yeah. Yep. One of my favorite signs. Mine too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of cancer friends. Yeah. I'm a Leo, so it's a. Oh. It, it's good balance. Uh, it's good balance. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I'm a cusp Leo Virgo. Virgo? Yeah. yeah. Leo Virgo. I'm on uh -huh. the cusp, apparently. So nice. I don't know much about it, but... <laughs> He's 824. Yeah. Uh -huh. So also coming up. Yes. Also coming Very up. Very nice. So a lot of celebrations and... How did you get into dentistry? So I actually, uh, with our social media team, uh, who's been doing an amazing job, kind of bringing out... Uh, a part of us that we were kind of like on the back burner because we, our social media was just so much teeth. Like, you know, that's what we focused on. And it was just like constantly, constantly posting teeth after teeth. And we do a lot. Like another thing that sets us apart from a lot of dentists and, you know, people come like ask us like, you know, friends and family, how do I choose the right dentist? And how do I know someone is doing something that I want con constantly is, we post a lot of teeth. Like in an average month, we post a lot of smile makeovers. We're constantly posting. And that was something uh, part of our social media. And now uh, our new social media team is like really, really pushing us to bring out that side. And one of the new things that we, newer things, it might be like a couple posts behind that we talked about how I got into dentistry was all over a car, <laughs> which is really 
and it's still all over. <laughs> <laughs> so it was uh, the car guy. Yeah, I, I, we both are. Don't car let him throw me under the bus. <laughs> we both are car guys. Um, so what in America? I don't know if you spend your teen years here. So no. I review that. It when you're like 15 years old, you're still in high school, and mm-hmm. it's the biggest thing. Like, you know, what car are you gonna get? It's like you know, puts you like in the you know which kind of friends group and stuff like that. So it's a big thing. And I was always a car guy. It, when I first got my license in about 15, around 15 years old, my parents didn't have this means to get me a cool, super cool car. So I chilled for about a year. I didn't have a car. And then I really, really like not having it made me more like in tuned and like really like eager to get a car. So I started looking more into cars and like, you know, different types and engines and really getting to the specifics. And it got to a point that I'm like, listen, like if you want it, right, you got to go get it. So I knew that, you know, my parents could help me with a regular car, but as a car guy and like, you know, you really want to go after what you want. So um, I had one of my cousins that was working at a dental office randomly and um, they haven't, they happened to be hiring and I needed a job. So, cause I could want, I want to, you know, get money to get the car I want. Dedication. Yeah. I was a hustler when I was young. So I started <laughs> working, I started working at a dental office and a smoothie store and I was in high school. So I really started like making a small little money and eventually use that to get the car I wanted. And once I started working in the dental office, long story short, I ended up staying there my for about eight to nine years. So I spent my entire, entire teenage years and early 20s in a dental office, just working and working and working. And I got so used to it. I became so confident with my hands. And then one day I remember I was still young and you, you get to a point that like you're out of your 15, 16, you get into that 20 years old area that people start asking you like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Like, well, what do you, what do you want to do? And then I'm like, wow, like, you know, I'm really comfortable with dentistry. I'm really comfortable with what I'm doing. Not only comfortable, but you're good at it. Yeah. Too, so. I, 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 <laughs> my, you know, bless his heart. The doctor I used to work for. He was very lenient and he loved teaching. So I lo- I was a sponge. You know, when you're young, you learn. Yeah. You know, it's not the same when you grow up. It's like when you, you know, young kids learn languages and stuff like that. So I picked up dentistry really, really fast. And going back to the social media team uh, that came out that, you know, that's, that might have been a secret to our success. Both of us together is because we, we got into this early. Yeah. How did you guys meet? So we met at a, we just started working at a dental office. It was random. He was there already. Mm -hmm. And I had recently, like at that time, got out of dental school. So I was looking at a, uh, looking for a job and that's how we met. And we've been working pretty much almost every day since then together. And it's been. And then one day you were like, I don't want to work for somebody anymore. I want to be. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it's just transitioning to like, you know, it was an opportunity and, uh, you know, it, made his way. It wasn't, it wasn't easy. It yeah. was for sure not easy, but it made his way into like, you know, we, we had a different vision of what we wanted to do. So we wanted to bring that vision to life and we were pretty on point. We're both very, very, very p- specific. And we talk, we tell patients all the time. Very like, specific. You're like, if you think if, if we're trying on something and we don't like it, we'll tell you before you even notice it. So we have that OCD of being like, perfectionist to the best as possible and yeah so we both on the same wavelength yeah we literally like sync synchronizing and whatever path we take like i'm always like yeah absolutely you know what i mean i understand his point of view exactly as he says it and yeah. he understands mine so we're like what a great team huh? yeah. Yeah, it, <laughs> it works where was that point where you were like l- like let's do our own office I mean, um, it was, that's always the goal. We, we went into it really fast. Mm. Um, you know, we, we knew we had a vision. We didn't know how we're going to do it, but yeah. we knew as long as we provide good service, don't cut corners, don't screw anybody over and just truly care about your patient we're going to be successful. And literally we stayed true to our numbers and we stayed true to our word and everybody, as we say now, gassed us up. 
and just blew us up. Like they love talking about us. They love posting it. They feel confident. You know, they give us, they give us so much love and that just like poured fuel on the fire. And like people ask us all the time, like, oh, like you guys are doing so well. You guys like, you know, you know, what's the secret? What's the secret? And, and truly like we say we work hard and we care. That's the true secret. Like we're like old school. We don't go out and do excessive stuff uh, to make things grow faster. We focus on those morals and it pays back. That's another thing I've heard throughout the years working in dentistry. A lot of people tell me, I know dentists are shady. And yeah, like, I'm like, well, listen, I know you have a bad taste. In your yeah. mouth, <laughs> but like, don't expect that here. Yeah. Or that's not that's not our motto. It's not our goal. Yeah, you know. I think there's like a lot of disappointment and a lot of bad experiences yeah. that feed that. And it's really a blessing once you come across you guys because the, the work speaks for itself. And I think it's a great message for everybody listening. Yes. Uh, whatever you're working in, at some point, you got to make that step where you don't work for somebody because maybe you're not aligned or you want to do things your way or yeah. you want to be a perfectionist in something. And if you really care about what you do, you care about, like when I do this podcast, I care about like the details, you know, like if the couch is covered too and like first they yeah. were like just covering the couch and I was like, no, I got to get the walls. I need everything to be like how I want it. Right. And then once it is that product that you want, you feel really comfortable and then it will speak for itself and then you can be yes. successful and you can be your own boss and no matter what you work in. And yep. this is like a truly amazing, especially once you found your partner in crime kind of. Yep. You're unstoppable and you'll be successful no matter what. A lot of people are like, oh, good luck with the podcast, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I always tell people I want to be the next Joe Rogan. And they're like, one person said, it's like saying I want to rap because Drake is a great rapper, right? And you can see things that way. But I will. I always tell people I'll make sure I don't need that good luck. I'll make sure this podcast will be successful right. because I will just put in the work. And I, I know from the gym, if you put in the work, it always pays, it pays off. off. I've never seen somebody put in day from day when they wake up to when they fall asleep thinking about one thing and being so passionate and full of love and then not succeeding. 100%. Impossible. Yep. Yeah. It doesn't and happen. Does, it, a, ha a hater is always lazy. A yep. hater is always <laughs> asleep and, and not doing anything. That's why you're a hater. Yeah, uh, you'll always be successful if you truly and you guys are a good example for that. If you do what you love and you, and you treat people with respect and give them the product that they want, yep. How could you not be successful? Yep. Yes. And we and that's another topic that I wanted to kind of touch bases on because we get a lot of DMs right overall about all different <laughs> types of stuff. But what we sometimes get is people that want to go into dentistry, right? Because it's a big field. You know what I mean? And it's huge. Everybody, you know, has to go to the dentist. And that's like another misconception about, I should go to my dentist only my teeth hurt. That's not true. Dentistry is like getting haircuts. You know what I mean? You use your mouth more than anything, almost anything. So that's, and, a, that's a very good yeah. Idea. So you, it's not like saying, oh, like literally, it's it's like I, I make this example, like any like patients, are like how often should I clean and clean my teeth? I'm like, how often do you clean your car? Like, you know what I mean? You're not going to go more than six months to a year to clean your car. And you use your car almost every day. So anything you use to this extent, eating, talking, you're going to eat three, four times a day sometimes, you know? You know, you talk all the time. Just like us sitting here, we probably exchanged thousands of words already. So you're using your teeth more than anything else in your body. Like when girls get their nails done, like you don't use your nails as much, but that's so important for them. So again, going back on like, you know, Dentistry being a big thing, a lot of people going to dental school. Like we have in California alone, five dental schools. So, and I'm a little biased. I think I went to the best one. Shout out to <laughs> USC. Uh -huh. I'm just saying, but um, piggybacking on what you said, people message us that are going into dental school, want to go to healthcare overall. They see that like, you know, we're doing something different that is working or not working their opinion. They ask us like, hey, do you have any advice for us? Yeah. And we constantly say like, if you think dentistry is for you, don't just look at us. You got to go work in a dental office because you don't know what it is until you put that effort into that office. You're, it's like saying, I want to do a podcast. Like, 
just watching a podcast is not going to let you do podcast. You got to be. No, you got to do it. You got to do it. You yeah. got to come. Like you got to be on a podcast. You got to like maybe do editing on a podcast. You got to do something in that field so Absolutely. you fully get it. Because when yeah. I was in dental school, like a lot of people that become dentists is because they're like, oh, I don't want to go to medical school. It's too hard or it's too like di different or I don't want to do this. And, you know, maybe dentists make money and this and that. You know, when I was in dental school, people like sat next to me and stuff like that. And like, oh, I, I became a dentist because I, you know, it was hard for me to, come, to become a, a irregular doctor. And it's not like that. Dentistry is different. It's challenging. You have to have an artistic side. There's so much into it. So for all those people that ask, and I'm sure you have a lot of younger people watching and people that are just in an area that they want to like, they're not sure what they want to do. Whatever you think you want to do, and this is life advice from me, like my biggest, biggest thing, whatever it is that you want to do in life, I don't care, like anything. Don't just assume, go try it out. Because you could at 15 and a half, you could get your workers permit and go into that job and they will hire you or shadow or something. Once you've done that for six months, that's my cutoff. Six months, then if that still sticks to you, then you would do that job. You'll be happy. You'll be successful. Not when you go blind, because like I feel like ha I don't want to say half, but a good percentage of the people that I went to dental school with, they don't even do dentistry anymore. They just did that and they yeah. realized, you know, it's not for me. I'm actually like I'm not going to do the physical part of dentistry. I'm going to go into teaching. So they should have gone into like you know be a teacher and stuff like that. So you know, it, and I know you love to give advice on this sure. channel. I yeah. want people to like. Uh, you know, take something with. Exactly. Yeah. Take something with. I like with. what you said, like the, to be the best in the field is always going to be really hard. 100%. Like no matter like how easy it is to study or like it's so yep. much shorter than being a heart surgeon. Right. If you want to be the best heart surgeon or the best dentist or the best plumber, yep. that number one percent, you got to put in the work no matter what you do. Yep. And I also love what you said that no matter how many YouTube tutorials I'm going to watch about working out, if you don't go in the gym, <laughs> yeah. you know, you cannot, you don't understand what it is mm -hmm. until you try it. Mm -hmm. And the constant uh, uh, failing and succeed, success always, I've read this, I think that like, it is like if you fail and you get back up, that's what they call success. Yep. You know? yeah, exactly. Not if you've tried for the first time. That's more like talent, I yep. guess. But exactly. like if you can always outwork talent yep. and you can always put in the work and, and you'll be successful. And I like to ease yourself into it. Try yep. it out. And don't do it out of a, a motive where you just want to cut corners or or because it's easier. Or you think they make money yeah. or stuff like that. Because no, ease yourself into it. Try it out six yep. months. And then if it is for you, uh, go pursue it. Yep. And if it's not for you, try something else. Yeah, because yeah. you don't want to be miserable with your profession. Imagine yeah. imagine you dedicated your, like, for example, like whatever you do, dental school is like, I don't know, 12 years sometimes. And, you know, anything like, You've put in years and imagine that you did all of this blindly. You went to school for 10, 12 years and you come out and you start working and then she's like, shit, this, this is not it. Yeah. This is not, like, that would suck. So and that happens a lot. A lot. That happens a lot. In, in every field, in every field, I feel like people that say, oh, I hate my job. Like, were you shocked? Like, why didn't you try it out? It's like saying, like, um, I don't know. Like, I, uh, you have to try. If you, you're given the chance to try it, so why not try it? So, again, takeaway. So, you guys love your job? I love I We both love our job. That is, that is so yeah. nice to hear, yeah. I mean, you don't hear that enough these days, I guess. If, if we didn't love it, I don't think patients would be happy with me. Yeah, yeah. Enough. for sure. I mean, listen, it has its challenges. Yes, you know? of course. It's not everything that you do to a high extent. It's it's challenging, yes, but is it rewarding? Oh, my God. Like, we've seen people's lives get changed. You've seen anybody, and I stand by this, Parham stands by this too. And it's just not us. Anybody that we have worked on, we have immediately seen their careers go to the next level. Whatever it is they're doing, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not us, it's what we bring out in them. Just like we said, it's not like, it's, it's not just my teeth looking nice, it's how I feel inside. So 
we feel like we're making people com- comfortable and them being open and them being the best version of themselves brings more opportunity to them. So we're just helping them open more doors. We're not doing anything crazy. We are just like giving you that confidence that's within you to do what you want to do and go out there and try new things. You know what I mean? Because you're not no longer hiding because so many people, have you guys seen like, even in Hollywood, like people are so trained to hide their imperfections. Like people on uh, reality TV and stuff like that, like they know which angle, right? They know like, you know, their heights and they know like if they're going to smile and they're not happy, it's how to cover the teeth at which angle to look. But if you eliminate all of that, imagine the confidence that's within you that comes out. Yeah. And because, how many girls, like they cover their mouth when yep, they yeah. laugh, uh-huh. right? How many yep. people do that? Yep. I remember when Baby J had the Bell's palsy, yep. she would also start covering her mouth because she got so insecure because one side would go up, yep. the other one... That yeah. was crazy. And it's like crazy to watch that. And like now she's insecure yep. and she cannot openly laugh anymore. And you... D- imagine this you this happy moment happens and you hold yourself yep you you try to cover that moment down as soon as a happy moment comes immediately it's connected with uh they're gonna see my teeth something negative yeah. so you kill every time you laugh you kill that moment instead of having this like loud like when my two-year-old smiles he doesn't think about shit yep. like that <laughs> right he just smiles and laughs and like he doesn't think about like should my mouth open this wide you know do i spit like, I don't know, nothing. It's completely genuine and it's completely happy and like innocent. And yep. girls and are crazy with that. Like, it's like common oh, yeah. even in cultures like uh, Asian cultures where yep. you always cover your mouth. It's considered, you have to almost cover your mouth yep. and you see it everywhere. Yep. And then the whole mask shit too, uh, where people like love that. They still wear the masks, yep, even the though the <laughs> CDC and everybody has admitted that it doesn't really help. Yeah. They still love that. I'm gonna hide. They they wear the cap and then the the mask. The mask yep. and they're just like are in their comfort zone, and it's so sad. It, it really is sucks so sad. Even I see somebody alone walking around with a mask or in so a car. Sad. So sad. It's it, it's not that at that point. I don't think uh, you're right. It's not the you know the whole COVID thing anymore. It's it's, it's beyond that. They it are, is your insecurities. Yep. And you. It's just a net another level of yep. self hate. Another another layer of you could hide behind. Yeah. You know, it's like some people that wear sunglasses like absolutely everywhere. Like, you know, it, it minus the cool factor of it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> um, but it's 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 sad how the people have became so accustomed to it that they're hiding behind it. It's 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 truly sad. And once that goes away, um, you know, that becomes it's not the norm anymore. You're gonna see people that, you know, we've seen people that they say, hey, I was okay when I was wearing a mask. But now, like at work, I don't have to wear a mask anymore and I need to fix my teeth. Whoa. Yeah, we hear yeah. that all the time. And the, the successful people always want to surround us, yourself with successful people. Yep. And you don't want to have somebody insecure because that yep. triggers your own insecurities. Yeah. Yep. So when you have somebody complaining and like, putting everybody down and putting themselves down. Everybody feels it in the room. And like you said, all, obviously all your patients succeed because now there is nothing to hide. They are themselves, they're yeah. confident, they smile, and that attracts other confident people that are also successful in their life because yeah. they put that out in the world and with all the energies and and all that that bliss you have from that smile, uh, it just, it can only, the only way is up. So yeah. yep. you guys making a, a huge difference in people's life. And uh, maybe like, uh, let's talk some numbers. Oh, okay. How expensive, how expensive uh, is it? Every it's, case is different. It's so different. Honestly, like we, that's a big question, yeah. obviously. Um, obviously I have to bring that up. Yes. No, <laughs> I, I'm glad you did because uh-huh. we're going to get into it in a different sense and Every case is different. Let's 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 for example take Baby J's case, yeah. right? Um, she got the smile she wanted, right? It's still cosmetic. So when people say, "Oh, how much for your cosmetic procedures?" How am I supposed to directly answer that? Because you could go the Baby J way, like which is super not expensive as far as Invisalign goes. Invisalign is. Uh, to most extent, even compared to braces, very affordable because, yeah. you know, you, you could break it down in payments. There's so many factors. 
And then there's cases that are like super extreme. Someone that had a, like a car accident and completely needs a full mouth reconstruction. So it's not even close. Yeah. So Invisalign, so, we're talking about like 500 to 1,000, no, 2,000. Um, Invisalign. <laughs> or just a range. Invisalign can start anywhere from 1,500 and go up to 7,000. Yeah. It depends on yeah. the case. Okay. The longevity of the case, the complexity of the case, yep. totally different. Of course, if they're really... Right. If you have to correct them a lot, yeah. it has to be different yeah. than the small. Same goes with veneers. Uh-huh. It can, you know, it can start anywhere from three, four, five thousand, and it can go anywhere to seventy, eighty, ninety thousand. Yeah, it just depends on the case. Or you redo it, and it just like it's like <laughs> yeah, Sh- a hundred thousand. <laughs> should we do another? Li- should we do another life advice <laughs> in this in this redo thing? Do redoing a case. Mm-hmm. So, so I had a patient that like, oh, I'm just going to go and do it somewhere like that's cheaper and I'm going to take the risk. And in their mentality is like, oh, what's the risk? Oh, I'm just going to go do it. If I don't like it, I come and redo it. It's not like that. It's truly like if take it, whoever is watching that is considering anything cosmetic, anything. I'm not talking about just teeth, okay? Because we work with a lot of other doctors that do all sorts of cosmetics, right? Anything cosmetic you do for the first time is way, way, way easier than a revision, both on the patient and on the doctors. And now there's so many people messing up with these veneers that some doctors are charging more for revision and rightfully so, because as a doctor and as our team, we're putting so much more time into fixing another person's design or method or right or wrong is taking us so much more effort. So rightfully so, a lot of dentists are charging a lot more. So another life advice, and I know you like this, so I'm going to go, please, please, there's always two options. Either do it right or don't do it at all. So when a patient comes to me and says, listen, doc, like I know it, and I might need to save on it. And, and don't get me wrong, there's a lot of other ways you could do this. Not an average person might be able to afford a full mouth reconstruction case. But, you know, we have like ways, let's like, you know, payment methods and like, you know, a lot of people are figuring it out because it's it's worth it at the end of the day. But going back to what I was saying, it's it's truly, truly way more important to do it the right the first time than it is to taking a risk of revision. So life advice from us as you know you know professionals in the cosmetics, you know, for people that have had thousands of thousands of veneers that we have under our belt, seeing all types of patients, big or small, whatever it is, do not, do not, do not just take a risk on your teeth. It's because, not paint. It's not yeah, like painting a wall. Yeah. And even that's hard. Sometimes you paint a color, you gotta you gotta prime it a couple of times before yeah. you get your next next yeah. color. So yeah, that's just some do good it, advice. So do it right the first time. Yeah, do it right the first this time is, because like same as like, I guess with the BBLs and all that. There Once it's messed up, it's hard to figure it out. So much harder. Yeah. Yeah. So much harder. And again, the standards. And more expensive. More, like two could, times is always more expensive than no one. one. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So we have patients that come in like, Doc, I just paid literally like composite veneers. Okay. This is. What is composite veneers? Oh, okay. Oh, we could talk two more hours about this. But composite veneers are temporary veneers. Mm-hmm. Whoever says they're not temporary is, I don't agree with them. I'm nothing to them. I, it's 99% of the cases I've seen, they're temporary. And what I mean by temporary, I'm not saying one or two days. In dentistry, we want longevity, right? So I've personally almost never seen, what, composite is How long do you think? The longest, longest I've seen is maybe two and a half years. Yeah. Longest. Two and a half years, which is nothing because they still they're still expensive. You know, it's it, it's still it's not worth it for two and a half years. So how long is normal veneers? Depends on how you take care of it. Yeah. yeah. So by the Just, book, you want to say ten to fifteen years. Yeah. In reality, if you're taking good care of your teeth, you know, flossing, brushing, going in for your regular maintenance, cleanings. If you're a grinder, wearing a night guard, 
We have a we have a, a WWE. He was WWE yep. wrestler. Wrestler. He was actual wrestler. Yeah. He came to change his veneers. Yeah. And actually, he chipped one. And he's yeah. like, "Oh, I'm ready to change them out." Literally, they were flawless. They were great. We're like, "Why do you want to change them?" He's like, "Oh, I hit 22 years already. 22 years." And yeah. he's still coming in for cleanings, and it still looks great. And he's still brushing, flossing. He yeah. takes care of his teeth. I'm like, you don't need to change these. You yeah. Know? And at, at 20, after 22 years, they're not that hard to change because they've kind of went through wear and tear anyways. And that's another thing about dentistry is that not since, again, going back to amounts that we use on mouth is insane. Like chewing, talking, facial expressions, sleeping, breathing, like people that snore, dry mouth, medication, all these things that go in the factor of your mouth. It's crazy for something in your mouth to last that long. It's like saying, I've been driving the same car with the same tire for 22 years. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, the tire on a car is like the teeth in the mouth of a human. Like you use that thing for a lot. So when someone hits 22 years, it's not that hard to change them anymore. But when someone goes and does their teeth, like they do composite veneers or they do like veneers that are they need to be changed after six months, it's really tough to break that bond. It's very fresh. It hasn't been used that much. It's just not sitting properly. It looks like cheek. It's, it, it, it's it's not done right. And a lot and, of the times they kind of fuck up your bite. Yeah. So now we have to try to figure out, okay, where's this patient's bite? Where do yeah. we get their comfort on their, you know? Yeah, it gets frustrating. And then we, I've seen a lot of rappers who have changing them like three times already in like a couple of years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've had, we've had, we've had dentists try to fix their own veneers multiple times and then the patient gave up and we have to step in. Yeah. We've had someone, we, we were the third time changing it. Fourth. Fourth They time. changed it three times. Three times. And Imagine the stress you put on your teeth. Three times to take those glue In and what time? In a year? No, less. less. Way less than that. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're crazy. sweating thinking yeah. about that. Oh my God. Just going through that process. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, like it's we not had the best. A, we had uh, a patient who actually... Uh, had such a horrible experience because once, okay, so how veneers kind of work is most of the times you take a small layer off the teeth and put you in temporaries. Mm -hmm. So when you touch a tooth, it be, you know, you want to cover it. You know, teeth cannot be naked. It's just like wearing clothes in some sense. Minus you, you never like to. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you want to cover it. So we had a patient that like actually went to a dental office and they worked on the teeth and they left it naked. Mm. You know, and we've seen that a lot, a lot. People cutting corners, like weird stuff. Stuff, like really, really, really weird stuff. Like telling them, you know, they did something and they didn't do using materials. They say it's like, you know, porcelain or this and that, and it's really not. And then we're in a situation that we have to break the news. So again, like it's it's crazy. It's really like really, really crazy because it's so popular. Like it's like saying people that go buy knockoffs of like Gucci, for example, because Gucci is so popular. So many people like they see it, they like it and it's, you know, they want it. So they'll do anything to get it. And one of the things they do to get it is it's just like they go overseas, they they do composite veneers, which are like, you know, they, 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 they tell them it's long term, but it's not. So um, it's it. You know, it messes up with the gums. We actually saw someone that um, this week that did composite veneers and one, they look bad for most part. It, it, it's it's a temporary material. It's not so it's meant not to cement. Not, it's not. It's just directly bonded on top, so it makes you feel like there's a like horse teeth, and your yeah. mouth feels heavy, and um, you know, and then it does. It's not contoured around the gums correctly for yeah. most of the times. Like I'm talking about nine ninety five percent of the time, and then you end up you get nice teeth, but then your gums are falling apart, and you have way more expensive and harder things that you need to deal with. Jesus. So yeah, I, I kind of don't get it. Like we, you know, patient comes in, does some work, they leave the next. Your gums need time to heal. Yeah. The cost the next thing my gums are bleeding. I know it's like, so inflamed after. Yeah, yeah, you know, give it some time. We we're we're digging under your gums, cleaning things out. These patients are yeah. years and years. They're like my gums started bleeding since day one. They bleed a lot. It smells. I'm like, so did you call back? Did you want to take it? You know, did, did you consider like, hey, what's going on with my mouth? No, nothing. So, I like he's mentioning the patient that we just saw this week. I was, I was very surprised. yeah. I was shocked. Of, I, I, there's times that like me and Parham look at each other. I'm like, okay, which one of us is gonna be the bad guy and tell her? 
And <laughs> how do we tell them? <laughs> like, how do we tell them in a nice, non-concerning way yeah. so they don't lose sleep and letting them know that we can help them? And honestly, they trust us and uh, we're blessed. A lot of people trust us and, uh, and you know, we want to be able to keep that up and provide good dentistry for a long time. And again, um, we're proud of all the cases we've done and we, we're not perfect. You know, nobody's perfect, but we definitely put in the time and... And yeah. love. And, and yeah. Can, honestly, we care a lot. Yeah. You know, we, we really do. Yeah, we lose sleep on it. <laughs> I say that to my patient. I'm like, ah... I've lost some sleep over your case. <laughs> and that's true. It's true. It's Man, true. And you guys do even the... I was really thinking about like making them all like gold. Yep. Because I used to be in love with grills. Yes. Of course. And yes. Uh, yeah, maybe one day I'll be ready for that. I don't know how Baby J we've, feels about that. But. We've we've taken people out of grills. Uh -huh. uh, we've taken... We help people with grills. So we we do a decent amount of jewelry. Um, as long as we feel like it's functional, it's not going to hurt you. Um, permanent grills, we're not a fan of because if you've seen the videos, taking them off and underneath, it's like horrible. Yeah. You know? And but we've had patients that like they're rappers and they wore grills most of the time. And, you know, because of smoking and stuff like that, they just like they just felt comfortable because, you know, smoking like coffee, it stains your teeth pretty heavily. Yeah, but these shiny teeth. Now, now we change them to shiny teeth and they're more than glad to toss those grills away. But the thing is, we, we actually did a case that we did veneers and we did a custom grill over. So it's possible. It just needs to be done by professionals. Jewelers are professionals the will make yeah. the no, I, ha I do have a grill but it's like it's nice if it's like you wake up <laughs> gold <laughs> bling you know yeah you can't take them out listen gold was a huge success in dentistry yeah. still is one yeah. of the best materials one of the best best materials you still see it on some of the older patients that you know had good financial status back in the day you know how everybody has those silver fillings mm -hmm. you could have put gold in there yeah and they would have been perfectly fine by now. Did you know? Good for the body. Uh, you know, yeah, non toxic. You can eat it. Yeah, it's so yeah, nice. Gold yeah. is nice. Gold is nice. It <laughs> might come back. It it, it, uh, it might come back. But we're we're open to it. And like, uh, no, not that everybody has veneers. I like. I'm always tempted by the thing that nobody has. Yeah. And uh, it would look crazy too. We could. Yeah. We 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 mix some gold with some veneers. Uh, we've done diamonds and that's, veneers. That's what I was just gonna say. Oh, uh, diamonds. Something. Inside veneers. Yeah. Wow. We did that actually for. Uh, Burner Boy, yeah, which is one of our uh, you know patients and friends, and he is very dear friend, yeah, loving extremely it. Extremely talented person. I don't know if you guys have seen his like recent like tour. Mm -mm. Um, I highly, highly suggest it. It's it's he is very talented and he loves what he does in the same aspect that we've been talking about. Um, you know, his music is great. We're proud of his smile, obviously, but uh, you know, a lot of our patients are on tour. That's another another thing that's coming back. More patients are asking us to put diamonds and gold. Yeah, yeah um, we have a we have a case. Individuality. Yeah, we have a case right now where um, we're doing uh, gold on the laterals and the canines uh -huh. with diamonds on them. Yep. So that's becoming more popular. But like customize uh, it. Customize it. Everybody yeah. has veneers now. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna mix. We're mixing the veneers with the jewelry. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, we do, we did it a couple of times before. Now it's getting more popular. Yeah. Nice. What about those crazy TikToks that you see, where the teeth are all the way shaved down? I'm so happy you brought that. Yeah, up. people mistake that with veneers. Yes, that's not that's, the case. That's, yeah, that's, those are not veneers. Those are crowns. And um, either there's two there's two scenarios. One, if the teeth are shaved down to that much, the person had so much decay and needed to be taken down to that much. It's not like the dentist's fault. Um, you know, it, dentists have to take out whatever is like defective before they put anything over it. Or they were just at overseas where the standard is different and they ha they, like they were taught that this is normal, right? There's nothing against them. It's just what they've been taught, and which is crazy. Like people that have like the craziest surgeries and their lives are on the line, like you living in Vienna or something like that. I don't know if you've heard like where I was, where I come from, like if someone was dying and like they need to do like a life 
changing procedures, but like, oh, go to America. Like, you know, it was, they're, they're advanced. So it's crazy to me that people sometimes don't come here when the standard is so high and there's so much technology that we use in dentistry, probably more, more than almost anywhere in the world. So those nubs, what we call it, when uh-huh. they shave it down to nubs, it's all over TikTok, all over YouTube, gets millions of views mm-hmm. and puts millions of fears in people's lives. Um, it's not standard. That's not the case. That's, That's not, not the, the case. case. It doesn't have to be like that. You know, either you are in a place that that standard okay and it's okay by them or you needed that so if you don't need that and you're in america and it's usually not the standard depending on who you go to and that's what you need to do your research maybe we should talk about that next but yeah you don't need to get your teeth shaved down yeah. to enough if the quality is high we just need a little bit i i say we need the thickness of a nail yeah yeah and that's that's literally it, how much what a porcelain veneer is. Yeah, it is a case by case. Yeah. Too. Like in some, like he was saying, if the teeth have lesions on it, or we need to kind of reangulate the teeth. Yeah, yep. sometimes you can do a little bit more shaving. But yep. general, plain cosmetic veneers. No, that's no, not the case. It's not the I'm, case. I mean, I even when I was thinking about veneers before I got into it, I even thought that they would make those metal. Uh, oh god, yeah. They would, like Little Wayne has yeah. where you take out all the teeth oh, god. and then put like metal in it. A lot of sticks, people think that. metal sticks and then the teeth on top of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then you find out you just need a little uh, yeah. prep and uh How many how many times have you had a patient ask you when they come in for veneers? How many times have you had a patient ask you, "Are you going to take out my teeth for these no. veneers?" Like right? literally, like a it's lot a of people think that. Yeah. They think that like we need to take the entirety of the tooth out to give them veneers. And again, obviously that's not that's true. Not We're not doing that. We want to save as much as tooth structure as we can, yeah. especially in our office. I know it might not be in every office, but again, you got to do your research. Like the these pages, a lot of our patients that have had bad experiences, they then go do research about that office and that person. And they were like, I cannot believe I went to this person. Look what they wrote about him. So again, you got to do your research. Um, you know, uh, one of the topics that we get asked a lot, either not, not on podcasts, but like social media and like, how do you pick the right doctor for mm-hmm. you? Not a dentist. I'm not just, just overall right doctor. And our main focus and our response is one, you got to do your research. You got to either talk to somebody that's personally been to that office, okay? If you don't have that, you got to you got to read the reviews, right? Do some research, read the reviews. Two and three, you got to go to someone that does this in and out and constantly, like a specialist. Like if you need a root canal and it's a crazy tooth, you're not going to go to an average person. You need to go to the person that's a root canal specialist to do that right because that's what he does day in and day out, multiple times a day, and that's what he knows best. So again, if you're looking for a cosmetic, let's say dentist in this case that we're on the subject, you need to go to someone that you know you've heard from somebody immediately if you're blessed. If not, you've done your research online. You've seen that they constantly do this work and you see their samples and you like their samples. They need to be posting a lot of samples because, you know, and and, and I tell my patients all the time, they're like, okay, like, I'm like, yes, you see our work. There's thousands of transformations of slides. If you see constantly you like that person's work and you could set it up and go for it and the guy has good reviews, that should be the person for you. Um, and then obviously you should go in for consultations and meet the person. <laughs> if, it's a, if you're not vibing with them, that's another thing. Uh, you know, when you go into an office, you have to kind of like, you know, vibe with the office. That's very important too. The office has to be like what you're looking for. Like, you know, it, it has to be clean. It has to be organized, you know. And another thing that a lot of patients that tell us that they don't like about some offices is that they don't get the time they need. You know, they feel like they need to rush, 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 rush. The doctors are just moving along so fast. We try to give everyone their time. And, you know, those are the some of the factors to look into. For sure. Yeah. Especially when they rush, that's really bad. Yeah. When they're rushing. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's not good. I mean, it happens sometimes, but if it's all the time, it's, I would feel, you know, if I, I go to the doctor myself, my doctor was like, you know, 
running around and like, you know, trying to get to the next room while I'm expressing my Not answering or, your questions or yep. concerns. Yeah. Yeah. So. Those so with all the technology and everything, do you have any idea where the whole dentistry is going to go? Is there going to be like something better coming out than Invisalign or is veneer the answer or like for all, like, especially me thinking back when I was a teenager, um, you know, is there, what, what is the future of, of teeth? One thing also, veneers are not just cosmetic. Yeah. It has a lot to do with functionality. And I don't want to say veneers, let's call, them por- let's call it porcelain because patients come in with, uh, uh, um, Dr. Fernick did a, uh, um, a video about this, actually, an educational video where we're doing reconstruction. Yep. We're rebuilding your bite. So uh, that, that uh, pleasing aesthetic is the cherry on top. So yep. fixing the bite, functionality, able to eat, you know, broken teeth, placing implants, all of that comes in with the cosmetic. Yeah. So talking about the future, I, I, I think about this a lot. I really don't see um, AI being no. a big thing in dentistry. I don't yeah. think anybody wants to go to a machine and get their mouth drilled. Yeah. It's like, you want an interpersonal, you know? Yeah. Interpersonal Two reaction. hands on. Yeah. It's way, it, like, think about it. We're working on something that's about five to 10 millimeters maximum. It's like tiny and it's in a, you know, it's very, very technique sensitive. If we, we go a millimeter and a millimeter is like three hair strand. It's like not much, right? Left and right, it's going to be a big issue. So AI, I feel like has a long way to go. I think what the future of dentistry is everything is going to become more digital. If you notice, like when we were kids, we go to the dentist that had the film x-rays you guys remember that we had to like put it on that like you know thing like that's obviously digital that's like that's been a while and now like when we take impressions like the people we used to gag and all that stuff that's also digital mainly now and we're blessed to have all of these things um you know and we have like 3d imaging which is called ct scan which are blessed to have that also um a lot of laser instead of like actual drilling that's some of the future laser numbing laser drilling so instead of the you could cut with laser that's kind of becoming a new thing in dentistry uh but i think veneers itself they're going to be here for a while yeah. it's too it's too artistic what about the brushing the teeth is that ever going to go away mm, no, no it's never going to go <laughs> away but it's like a thing like water a picks of... are huge now a lot yeah. of water this 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 is new. I don't know the. They the should system. come out with something better, no? Because like, so they just did. They just did. They just came out with this. Have you seen it? There's this like little um, mouth yeah, pieces that, that go inside your mouth. Mm-hmm. So imagine like a like a uh, you know Steph Curry or like a football football player mouth mm-hmm. cord, and it has a huge water line attached to it, and it goes inside your mouth, and it just shoots water in all bunch of direction. <laughs> it sounds it sounds like it would do something. Listen, I'll take it out of over somebody that doesn't do anything. Yeah, like I'll take that. I'll take that any day. Um, so yes, they're because, coming yeah, up. They're, I always think about this because like. When I look at my parents and look at me, there's so much things yeah. that have changed completely oh. with the smartphone. Oh, yeah. Then I look at my toothbrush and they use the, like, of course, mine is might be electric or not, but like... It better be electric. It is electric, but like, there's not much change, you know? It's coming. It's coming. I mean, like the electronic yeah. toothbrushes, if you pick the right one, they they do they do amazing job. Yeah. The water picking, which was which got popular for people that had um, dexterity problems, like older people that couldn't really get the thread flossing. That's mm-hmm. how I think water pick became popular because that's what they were using for those uh, patients. Now people are using that instead of flossing. It it, it helps, but I, I we both Parham is king of hygiene here. Like he's he'll he'll get on your case if he doesn't like it. <laughs> he I think he still would rather you finger floss with the threads rather than water pick if you Absolutely, can. Absolutely. Yeah. But or if you're both. not or both. Or I both. both. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And we both. talked about that. And that's why your gums look the way they do yeah. now. <laughs> you know, they're not puffy, they're pink, yeah. coral pink like the couch. Um and that's a healthy smile. Yeah. That's like you know it's nice and tight. It's so not, water pick, floss yeah, two, two times daily. What's the order? Three times. <laughs> Hear it from the professor. Here's some life advice, please. Life <laughs> advice, come on. This is very important because yeah. nobody knows the actual steps. Yeah. Everybody thinks... Only as a kid steps. Kind of, for kids. It's, what is... I don't, I don't know if there's like a real order, but what I your think... Your order. I What's think your order? Floss, water mm-hmm. pick, brush. 
Oh wow. And you can rinse. Okay. Like that. Floss, water pick, brush. Brush and then mouthwash? You could do mouth mouthwash is like what you know, yeah. it's a whatever thing. But yeah, yeah, you could do a little mouthwash. I think, you know, you're flossing, getting all that hard stuff yep. out. Yeah. Water pick shoots out all the, you know, residuals yep. sitting mm-hmm. there. And then you get your toothbrush, your bristles get in between the teeth. Yep. You know, it gotta so be electric. Electric for toothbrush. most part. Uh-huh. You know, and you have to be don't gentle. Brush it, just like yeah. easy, easy. Yeah. Tips of your finger. Tips uh-huh. of your yeah. finger. Yeah. You know what's a huge and how do you not get the buildup? So you gotta get your listen, to the, no matter how well you do this, mm-hmm. okay. So a mouth is like a washing machine. God created a washing machine in our mouth. So your saliva is supposed to go in there and clean everything out. If you have perfectly aligned teeth, it's easier to clean. Okay, and I use this, uh, somebody's for sure going to take this example of mine. It's one of my favorite. Whoever steals it, you could have it. So um, my example is if I get a ketchup bottle and I spray it on a flat surface, all I need is one napkin and I get 90% of that off. But if I get a ketchup and I spill it on a corner... It's going to take me an hour to clean that corner because there's multiple surfaces. So if you, and that's the beauty about Invisalign and Baby J maybe could agree with this. Um, If you have nice straight teeth, your mouth does a lot of cleaning by itself and your toothbrush does a lot. But there's still, there's too many corners for you to cover and there's, and your tongue kind of rests on some of your teeth so it doesn't let it kind of clean up. Your cleanings are a must. We do things that you and your toothbrush cannot do. So again, it's impossible to get no buildup. Everybody, even me, him, we all get buildups. But it's as long as you maintain most of it and it's just not sitting around your teeth and becoming hard calculus and affecting your gum. Because if you get calculus, you 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 get bone loss and it's a whole other issue. So again... You're still going to get built up. You still got to do your cleaning. But if you're on top of it, you do less frequent. So again, that's that's that. And the big, big topic that you t- went into dental products is um, tooth electronic toothbrush and handheld toothbrush and people grinding. That's huge in LA. Everybody in LA is grinding. Yeah. It's insane. For whatever the reason, I'm not going to get into the specifics <laughs> of it. But everybody in LA is grinding. It's insane. Like I, more than ever, like just grinding, clenching, you know, and the masks are not helping it because people are like, just like, like the mask are putting, putting strength on the, yep, on the ears. yep. The mask really, really got to people with mouth breathing, not getting enough oxygen, not drinking water because they have their masks on and a lot. And like, oh, nobody's going to see my teeth. So what I didn't brush last night. You know you're, what I mean? And you're breathing harder. So yeah. your mouth gets dry. You, get oh, yeah. Harder. This mask situation was really tough on people's mouth. And again, and then and the, the whole concept of which I'm not going to really get into, but if you need examples both ways, I'll give it to you. This uh, fluoride and toothpaste. Oh, I was going to ask that yeah. next. Yeah. It's like a very, very sensitive topic. Very sensitive. It's, fluoride. Or no fluoride. Pro fluoride or against fluoride. So we... Because my dentist, for my two-year-old, she was like, yo, you guys use fluoride? We were like, what? She's like, yeah, I would I would use fluoride. Yeah. And we were like looking in Google and then the, the yeah. opinions go... Shh, shh. Yeah. It's like almost like uh, Trump the, and Biden. I and mean, the <laughs> vaccine or no vaccine yeah, situation. It becomes intense. It's, it gets intense. Yeah. So we will give you... We respect all, all forms of... Opinions, whatever you believe yeah. in. Um, so as our job is to tell you the pros and cons and give you options. Okay. It's you, your life, you decide however you want. Fluoride, some people need it. Like, I'm not going to say what percentage, but they, they need it. Do they need it the whole life? I don't know. But to some extent, they do need it. And there's some people that like, listen, they're really good. Okay, they might not need it, this and that. But again, if our patients come to us with whichever way we don't, you know, we don't judge them. We'll give you options of which toothpaste has it, which which toothpaste doesn't have it. You know, we'll give you all forms of life and it's up for you to decide, but it's very controversial. And I think it's, it's a good topic. I, you know, I, I, I definitely see both sides and um, I think that more research needs to be done for it to be a final decision of, 
do you need it or you not need it? Or do you need it to a certain amount? Should it be? Yeah, should it how be do you like, find out if you're the one needing it or not? You should go to a dentist that you vibe with and mm-hmm. has education about it and is going to tell you the pros and cons and stuff like that. So you shouldn't make a decision by yourself. And, you know, because you, you should explore your options. Can the dentist, like, do... Is there any motive that the dentist would like put you on fluoride? Like, is there any? Yes. Yes. What is the? F- I want to say. I want to say. Majority of the patients we see mm-hmm. that don't use fluoride have a bunch of cavities. Okay. So that already, right there, in my perspective, fluoride is essential for the teeth. That's a, it's like a fact. Um, if you're taking your tube and like you know chugging down the tube, yeah, it's very toxic for you, but. For the most part, you're putting a, about a pea size on your toothbrush, yeah. brushing your teeth, spit out, rinse, spit yeah. out. You do absorb a little bit of the fluoride when you're yeah. brushing. But um, you got to, like he said, you got to look at the pros and cons. Right. Is it worth me not flossing and then ending up with dentures in, you know, how, however many years from now? Yeah, dentures. <laughs> Another topic. <laughs> or, you know, you know, I, I'm using the fluoride. A lot of times I see patients and I'm like, are you using, you know, like cavity, cavity, cavity. There's all this stuff going on. And I'm like, are you using fluoride? I'm like, uh, n- no, it's bad for you. I'm like, I recommend you using fluoride. Obviously, your mouth, you're the boss. Well, you could but, just, yeah, you could yeah. alternate too. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Listen, fluoride or no fluoride, alcohol or cigarettes, or any, anything you do to the extreme is not good for you. Like, anything you do to extreme, even working out too much is not good for you. You know, putting strain on your body. So again, let I think our message is let your professionals kind of help you and direct you and don't just cut things off or overdo things by yourself, especially in this thing. And obviously do your own research as well. So it's, it is individual and everybody needs to decide for themselves. But what I was getting at is, um, of course, the dentist want to protect you from cavities. Yes, but is there course. some financial motive <laughs> behind a dentist? Put not like Where's the connection where they would profit not corporate re- dentist, dentistry, corporate uh, uh, and uh, pharmaceuticals, this, pharmaceutical, yeah. corporate dentistry and stuff like that. Like anything that's corporate, mm. it, it, then things become pushy and you it, it becomes a cycle. You know what I mean? It's like saying, oh, do you need ketchup every time you have a French fries? No, but like <laughs> some dentists, you go in, it's like sequence. Oh, we did your cleaning. Let's put fluoride and do this and do this, do this. It's like step, step, step for them. It's like, it's it's too repetitive and they have to do it because of the corporate setup and the, the way the corporate is. So again, uh, we see a lot of issues with people that go to corporate dentistry and just corporate things overall. Dentistry specifically is too, is too hands-on and too patient focus and too patient specific for you to go straight to a corporate office that does something routinely, routinely, routinely. It's not routine for everybody. Everybody is unique. Yeah. So that's what I would see when they always put antibiotics because they I would pay them every time. Yes. It would cost extra. Yes. And it's better for them. There's some sort of of course. In, There's in like uh yes. incent where Yes. Yeah. The corporate dentistry people they, they work on production. It's like mm. when you go and that's this is with every business. I'm not trying to knock out dentistry or anything like that. Even when you go to a mall, you know what I mean? They are paid based on the sales. So, you know, they're not harming you hopefully in any way. And if you feel that, you know, this is your choice to move on to somebody else. And we get people that say, oh, I knew my dentist just being like weird and doing these things, but I stayed with them. But listen, a lot yeah. of things like in, den- in it's made in dentistry because it benefits people. Yeah. But yeah. The clinician and the way they're using it and if they're abusing it, yeah. that's where, where it becomes tricky. Yeah. And they abuse their their power a little yep, bit. Yeah, yeah. Yep. You know, if you really need the antibiotic and it's uh, applied correctly, then it's it's made to do what it needs to do, you know? Mm-hmm. But if you're like, hey, yeah. antibiotic, antibiotic, then it's yeah. just kind of... <laughs> no, but overall, in every aspect, our, our office is very, very conservative and very well-rounded. And we are constantly learning and upgrading, not technology only, but like educational and, you know, 
CE courses and being lifelong learners because things are evolving. Like dentistry, everything is evolving. So we are really on top of it and we challenge our patients to ask us, you know, with all these questions, even the sensitive ones. And, you know, and we we will try our best to answer it. If we don't know, we will be honest. We say, hey, you know what? Let me do some research. Like, Because I had a patient like call me yes, uh, a couple of days ago and ask me a topic that's not directly dentistry. It's about like, you know, breathing and snow. It, it, it falls into dentistry, but it's not something that you're, you know, looking up all the time and talking about all the time and like mouth breathing and this and that. So, um, you know, I had some advice. I've looked into it. I have done it myself, like mouth taping, which is huge in dentistry and just overall health, people that are mouth breathing. But I was honest. I said, listen, this worked for me. And this is the reason why I used it. Or I recommended it. Try it out. If it doesn't work for you, let me know. I'll look into some newer and a different or a new topic for you. And that's that's how we stay relevant. Because, you know, I'm not going to just give you something that's like, you know, cookie cutter, like you get from these corporate offices. Oh, you know, this doesn't work. You need this, you know, but sometimes you need to look into it and you need to be open with and open and honest with your patient saying, hey, I need time to look into this. I need to see, you know, this didn't work for you. Let me find you something else. Let me not just go down this path that I always know. Yeah. No, this is really, I love this. This is really good. Yeah. And you can like, I hope everybody can take something with to your home, like in, uh, especially like taking care of your real teeth. Yes. And then going to the right office, making the right choice. If you go veneer or not, or porcelain Mm -hmm. or not. Or even just fixing up your teeth because like I remember just as a child how much you suffer yeah, from teeth. Yeah. And uh, yeah, your mouth is so important. It is so important to invest in in yourself. Yes. And it seems like a crazy investment because it's like a high price, right? You drop like 10K, 20K, 30K. But then when it lasts, if it lasts 20 years, it's a beautiful investment. Yep. It can change your life forever. Yeah. And you only have one set of teeth. Yep. Once you're an adult, yeah. So you better take care of it. I, I hate people when they say, "Oh, you, I'm not the type of person that goes to the gym. I'm not a type of person that eats healthy." Like, what are you talking about? Like, yep. you, you, we're all imprisoned in this body, and once yep. it's old and done, it's done. So Yolo. you only live once. You only live once, <laughs> yeah. so you got to take care. As the sooner you take care of your health, the better. A lot of people just want to hustle and make the much most money. They don't sleep. They don't brush their teeth. Yep. They just want money. And you're going to be rich and then you're going to fall apart and burn yeah. out and it's not worth it. So invest in your health. Yes. Take care of your teeth. Yes. Find the dentist that you love. Yes. And uh, and your life will improve. And you guys, I, I'm a huge fan. And see, you know, dental smile, everybody. Yes. They're the, the people to go to. And like, even when you're traveling, this is really cool. I didn't notice. Yes. You can still come. You don't need to be an American or in LA. You no. can be from any state, any country. Yep. You just come, fucked up teeth or not. They'll yeah. fix you up nicely. <laughs> yep. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for thank being you for on the show. Us. This is yes. really great. Amazing. And uh, I hope you guys continue just making people happy and changing people's life. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. Thanks for having us. Of course. It's been a blessing.